You're listening to Radio MD. She's a chiropractic holistic physician, best selling author, international speaker, entrepreneur, and talk show host. She's Dr. Suzanne Bennett. It's time now for Wellness for Life Radio. Here's Dr. Suzanne. We're all inundated with chemicals, VOCs, volatile organic compounds, every single day. Now these are chemicals that are gaseous compounds that you breathe in, you can even ingest it, and absorb it through your skin. And they are in all types of personal care products, our food and water, our home and office, hidden within the flooring, the cabinetry, the furniture, our clothes, all part of the toxic soup we're getting exposed to every single day. Now formaldehyde is one of those indoor contaminants, VOCs that can wreak havoc to our body, but physicians rarely suspect it as the root cause of your fatigue, your brain fog and headaches, and other aggravating symptoms. So formaldehyde is commonly found in building material and it's used to produce the resins that are used in composite wood products. So particle board, plywood, medium dense fiber boards, insulation, and other building materials typically contain it. It's also found in paint, paint, glues, lacquers, finishes, fertilizer, outdoor you know, fertilizer, pesticides. Amazingly, it's also these preservatives that sometimes that are used in uh, fabric softener, dishwashing liquids, permanent press fabrics, cosmetics, and even medication. And formaldehyde is a byproduct of this combustion of other products, such as cigarette smoking and wood burning fireplaces and stoves. So the, most of, the web of us are actually being exposed through off gassing of formaldehyde in, and then we're breathing it in through our home and our office. So why should you care? Well, formaldehyde is a true poison. And whether it's for short or long-term exposure, it's bad for your brain, your mitochondria, all of your important organs and body systems. And in fact, the EPA and the Department of Health and Human Services consider formaldehyde a probable human carcinogen. So on today's Nature Secrets, I'm going to talk about the symptoms of formaldehyde exposure, how to decrease the level of formaldehyde exposure in your home and office, and how to detox it out of your body. All right, I actually am dealing with formaldehyde exposure right now in my own home. I'm going through this kitchen makeover and I'm getting new uh, cabinets put in, countertops, and even adding a French door. And although I'm using all types of green building products um, and making sure that my my paint is completely VOC formaldehyde free, well, you know what, guess what, it's still outgassing formaldehyde. Now how do I know this? I have a formaldehyde meter, of course. Now these chemicals have been bothering, bothering my eyes and my vocal cords, my nasal passages, mood and mental clarity. So I have to now wear a filtering mask and going in and out of my home and in my kitchen, of course. And I'm going to do that for a few more weeks because that level is still not uh, the best to my, uh, the level that I believe is at the healthy level. So, you know, one of the things that you might find in my book, The Seven Day Algae Makeover, I actually talk about a case study about a raspy voice. And guess what? That case study was all about me having formaldehyde poisoning for many, many years because I was dealing with um, the, um, you know, when you end up uh, going through biology and you end up having the dissection for human bodies and all that, you know, during chiropractic school, I was exposed to so much formaldehyde, it totally knocked out my vocal cords. And so the most common symptom, the most common symptom of formaldehyde exposure is fatigue and foggy brain. It also is really quickly absorbed in the respiratory system. So you can suffer, you might be suffering, let's say from a cold symptom, sore throat, coughing, chest pain, and maybe even asthma. But you know what, you may actually be, be reacting to the formaldehyde outgassing, especially if you just had some new furniture put in, or you got a new mattress, let's say, or new carpeting, or you put a fresh coat of paint in your, your office. So l remember, long term of these exposures can be really de devastating too, because it can cause dizziness, nausea, headaches, uh, even skin rashes, depression, mo uh, memory loss, mood disorders, irritability and attention deficit issues, and even insomnia. So really be careful and you want to find out how to clean up your living environment. And what I find that there's 
a lot of ways, but there are four big ways I'm going to teach you that. Now, number one, the best way to reduce the level of formaldehyde in your home or office is to really limit and remove common sources of the chemical. So we talked a lot about building material, and I'm talking about paint, stains, sealants, paint removers, and aerosols. So if you're going to use this, look for the green products, the ones that are low or zero VOCs. You will be able to find them because I've, I've been using them myself here in my own home. So and make sure you know what if you are renovating and you're using these products maybe you'd like to stay at a friend's house that's what I ended up doing I stayed at a friend's house my friend Linda thank goodness uh, because it was it was very helpful if it's too toxic you cannot live in the house while you're renovating it also if you've got new uh, furniture or cabinets excuse me new furniture and, and carpets and mattresses well you know what you can air it out air it out outdoors air it out in your garage especially if it's not connected to your home so that it can outgas. And the more you allow, the more time goes by, then the, the amount of, of formaldehyde emissions will definitely go down. You could also look for furnitures that are completely natural, hardwood, rattan, or iron. And um, you know what? Go to your local flea market. Pick out some really cool um, older older antiques that are solid wood or solid metal and that will help reduce the level of formaldehyde in your home. Now new carpets can contain adhesives and paddings and so you can also find 100% wool carpet that's zero VOCs in it and, and the natural fibers are the best like wool heart and you know bamboo uh, hardwood might be your second choice uh, if you don't want to do the carpeting and you know I, I I always say you can opt for throw rugs that you can actually wash instead of getting that full wall-to-wall -wall carpet. The, you can find a lot of information from the EPA um, online, so Google it up. And re remember, don't ever wear clothes or sleep in new bedding. New bedding before you have washed it, because you can actually absorb formaldehyde right through your skin. It's in a lot of different textiles, so anything that's made out of leather, um, you know, of course you can't. You can't uh, wash leather, but you can outgas it, really air it out, right? So number two, let's talk, talk about outgassing. Let's increase your ventilation. And if it's a cooler, if it's cooler in your home, that also lowers the outgassing uh, emissions in your home as well. So increase ventilation by opening up the windows every day and do it, of course, when it's not so um, toxic outside, meaning if it's you don't have any fires and and if it's um, low level of of pollen exposure, you know, make sure you open up those windows and use a fan. I love to use a fan to pull in fresh air, and you could even use a fan to pull it out. So you face it out, so that's pulling the air out of your house into your, let's say, backyard, out of the windows. And don't forget to open up your windows in your car. You know, when you talk about cars, oh my gosh, so much formaldehyde in the glue chemicals and the carpets and the leathers in the car. So um, open up the windows, but you know what? What you can also do is, is buy a one year old car. You get a used car instead. Now, you can also reduce the level of formaldehyde by putting plants in your home. It's really helpful. There are certain types of plants like spider plants, philodendrons, golden pothos, bamboo palm, Chinese evergreens. These are all great for removing formaldehyde out of your environment. And invest in an air purifier that can absorb VOCs. Now, charcoal is best. Don't get HEPA filters. I mean, you can get a HEPA filter, but get one uh, uh, air purifier that also has charcoal filter to absorb the gaseous chemicals, including formaldehyde. Now, how do we... Get rid of the formaldehyde that you are exposed to in your body. Number one, you gotta green up your nutrition. Dark green salads, lots of colorful veggies to, for high levels of vitamins, minerals, antioxidants. I am drinking my green powder twice a day so that it can help me get rid of my formaldehyde that I've been exposed to. Now, another thing that we don't get enough is vitamin Bs. All the different kinds of Bs, including thymine and riboflavin, which are really important for detoxing uh, the formaldehyde. So make sure you take a B vitamin, essential minerals, and super antioxidants such as glutathione, alpha lipoic acid, vitamin C, vitamin E, CoQ10. These are essential to decrease 
brain related symptoms such as brain fog, depression, f fatigue, irritability, headaches, all of that. All right, so clean up your house and I will see you next time. Thanks so much for being and listening in. This is Dr. Suzanne on Radio MD. Stay well.